Hey friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. For today's video, I am going to be sharing 10 beauty products that everyone seems to love that I hate. All right, it's a strong word because obviously all of these products are solid products for so many people, but for one reason or another, they just didn't work out for me. I've seen this trend going around for a while and I finally wanted to jump on the bandwagon because I do think it's really interesting to hear about products that so many people seem to love that just don't work for certain people and why that is. I think it's just a really fun reminder that there is never going to be one single product that works for every single person ever. So, Let's just jump on into it. First up is the Shiseido Anessa Perfect UV Sunscreen Skincare Milk. Back when I was preparing for my top 10 Asian sunscreens video, I wanted to make sure that I tested out as many top rated Asian sunscreens as possible because I didn't want to be missing any of the best ones when I shared my top 10. So even though I already had so many that I loved, I feel like my arms just spasmed. Even though I already had so many that I loved, I placed a huge order just in case. You know, you never know what goodies you're gonna find. So I bought a bunch of Asian sunscreens, including this one. I was so excited to test it out because I've heard so many positive things about it that it was supposed to be super lightweight, non-greasy, silky smooth, and leave no white cast. And those are all qualities I love in an Asian sunscreen, but I just did not have that experience with it. It is definitely liquidy and lightweight, but it's just not my favorite to apply. I feel like it has a little bit of an oily feel, which I just don't personally love. And when I apply two applications of this, which is what I always do with sunscreen, it goes a little bit streaky on me and is a little bit hard to blend. And I feel like it also has a really subtle white cast. So this unfortunately was kind of a flop for me. It just did not live up to the hype. And when I have so many Asian sunscreens, that are worth the hype for me and are so amazing that I love so much. It just doesn't make sense for me to continue using something like this that, you know, just doesn't hit all of the marks that I'm looking for. So if you have not yet seen my top 10 favorite Asian sunscreens video, I will list that in the description box below. Check that out because I have so many incredible options there that don't do any of the things that this sunscreen did on my skin. Next is the Smashbox and Becca Under Eye Corrector. This is a self-proclaimed fan favorite color corrector that is supposed to use reflective light to brighten the look of under eye circles. There are so many rave reviews about this saying it is the best under eye corrector for dark circles and discoloration. So I was really excited to try it out, but I just couldn't figure out how to not make it crease. I felt like no matter what product I used with it, it just always ended up looking really creasy on me, which is a huge deal breaker. I'm actually testing a concealer right now that I don't know if you guys can tell from this distance is starting to crease on me and I'm freaking out because I just can't stand that. I also feel like my favorite concealers that don't crease on me color correct enough for me. They cover up my dark circles enough so I don't really need an additional color corrector. So I will list my favorite concealer right now below. It is still the Lancome concealer. So freaking good. Oh my God, does not crease like that but gives me enough color correction. Next is the Dr. Jart Sika Pear Tiger Grass Color Correcting Treatment SPF 30. That is a mouthful of a name. This is one of those products that went super viral on TikTok back in the early stages of TikTok. Those were the days. This is supposed to be a green to beige color correcting treatment that corrects redness and protects skin from UV damage and environmental aggressors. I just could not get behind the texture of this product. I felt like it was just thick and heavy, almost a little bit pasty. So I went to look up reviews to see if I was maybe missing something, using it in the wrong way and I saw so many photos that people had left in reviews of this product separating on them and looking really oily and gloppy and gross. And I was like, okay, that's enough. I've seen enough. This product is not for me. Next is the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint SPF 40. Aside from the It Cosmetics CC Cream, I feel like this is everyone else's go-to recommendation for a makeup product with sunscreen in it. So I really wanted to love it, but I just didn't. I felt like this was just too oily of a product for me to get behind. It felt a little bit oily in texture and then also just looked a little oily on my skin and finish. And since I already have oily skin, that is a big no for me. I just didn't love that. And I know I'm going to be in the minority for saying this because everyone seems to say that this is the lightest weight product ever, but I just don't think it's as lightweight as everyone says it is. It's definitely not thick and heavy, but 
I don't know. I was expecting this to feel traceless on the skin and I don't think it does. Like the new triple serum SPF 40 that they launched, that is lightweight. So lightweight, but I actually don't love that product either. So I have a video where I review a bunch of viral products and I review that product in that video. So I'll list it below if you want to see it and hear why I just don't love it and don't think that works either. Unfortunately, I just haven't had a ton of success with Ilia complexion products, but I know so many people love them and I'm happy for you guys. I just am not happy for me because I wish they worked for me. Next is a perfume and it's Baccarat Rouge and I cannot remember for the life of me if I have told this story on YouTube already. I know I've told the story on Instagram. I honestly get so confused trying to keep track of where I say what, like between Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. I'm like, I don't, I don't know anymore. I don't know. So if I have told this story here before, cut me some slack, okay, will ya? I feel like this is one of those perfumes that is just a classic that you can't go wrong with. Everyone always seems to rave about it. It never seems to go out of style, but it is crazy expensive. So I did some Googling and I saw that Alt Fragrances, which is a brand that basically knocks off high-end fragrances and recreates them at an affordable price. Sorry, someone had to say it. They had their own version of Baccarat Rouge. So I was like, perfect, let's save some money and go with her and try her out. And when I first sprayed this, I was like, wow, yes, I like it. It's musky, it's sultry, a little spicy. I think I can get behind this. But as the night went on and it really like meshed with my skin and my body chemistry, it just became so overpowering. And I also made the mistake of spraying it in my hair. I actually learned my lesson with this. It was a good lesson. I will never again spray a perfume in my hair the first time that I'm testing it out because if I don't end up liking it, it makes it so much worse because obviously your hair is closer to your face. You can just smell it more. Hair, at least my hair, really, really holds on to perfume a lot longer than the rest of my body. So I just was getting wafts of this all night. I swear to God, I would blink and smell this perfume and it just was so intense. It ruined my night. I woke up with the worst headache ever. Well, maybe that was from the alcohol, but also I swear just from the smell. And then after that, I could not get rid of the smell. It was literally stuck in my hair for four days until I washed it again. So to be fair, that could 100% be because I bought the knockoff version, but I can now smell Baccarat Rouge everywhere. Like I can smell it on other people. It's that distinct in my memory. So I know it at least smells similarly, but maybe the actual Baccarat Rouge wouldn't get so intense and musky on me as time went on. Either way, this just did not agree with my body chemistry, which was a bummer because I know so many people love this so much. So if you are interested to hear what my top 10 favorite fragrances are, I will list a video where I share all of those below. Next is the e.l.f. Putty Primer. And for those of you that watched my original unsolicited beauty industry opinions video, then you know my thoughts on makeup primers. I personally feel that if a makeup product is truly good enough, you shouldn't need a separate primer. Like skincare should just be enough. But when I shared that opinion, so many of you were like, okay, but have you tried the e.l.f. primer? So I was like, fair, I have not. I'll put my money where my mouth is. I will purchase it, try it out, let's see. I was actually surprised when I first felt it because I was expecting it to have that really silicone-y feel that a lot of pore smoothing primers have. And it doesn't feel that way. It feels soft and almost a little bit wet. So it wasn't the texture that I disliked. I just felt like this didn't actually do anything to my pores. I don't know, I feel like everyone says it completely deletes the look of their pores. And I was like, mine weren't deleted. But it did actually end up affecting my pores because the next morning I woke up with several red bumps on my face from that product. That was the only thing that I had changed, the only new thing I tested out, and my skin never does that usually. It was so random, so I was like, oh my god, it was that freaking primer. It clogged my pores. <gasps> so all around, this product was a fail for me. If it works for you, again, I'm very jealous. It just did not do what I thought it was going to do. If you are truly looking for something that smooths the look of pores, I would highly recommend the Nude Sticks Blot and Blur Matte Stick. That product is phenomenal. It's like magic. Few swipes of that before foundation. 
What? Next is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Sleeping Mask, which of course, as I was preparing for this video and I wrote everything down, I went and looked this product up and I saw that it doesn't exist anymore because they have actually reformulated it and come out with a new version. And I was like, is that because I'm right? And because a lot of other people had the same bad experience as me? Probably not. <laughs> so if you've never tried this product, the brand calls it a luxuriously bouncy, breathable treatment that smooths and perfects skin with the use of watermelon, hyaluronic acid, and alpha hydroxy acids. I will preface this by saying that I haven't used this product in over four years, so it's been a while and I don't know how my skin would react now, but I also don't know that I wanna risk it based on the experience that I initially had. After using this only one time, my skin had a pretty bad reaction. I wouldn't necessarily say that I broke out in hives, but my skin was flushed and really hot and bright red and very uncomfortable. It just did not agree with my skin. And that was weird for me because at that time, I hadn't started using tretinoin yet. And tretinoin is definitely, in my opinion, what has made my skin so hyperreactive. So, weird that I had such an intense reaction to that product when I wasn't even using Tret. So that's why I have been scared to try this again because I'm like, my skin is way more sensitive now than it was then. If it didn't agree with me then, I can't imagine it would work now, but who knows, maybe now with a new formulation, it would be better. And it's interesting because I don't know exactly what caused that. I'm wondering if it was just because it is, from what I remember, a fragranced product and the mix of fragrance with chemical exfoliants just maybe didn't sit well on my skin. Next is the KVD Good Apple Concealer, another product that went viral on TikTok that I was very intrigued by because of the claims around covering dark circles. And this is a really nice full coverage concealer in terms of being full coverage, but it's also so, so flat and matte. And I feel like in the past year, I've really started to notice that concealers that are full coverage and matte at the same time, just don't look super flattering on my skin. I feel like they draw attention to my eyes in a way that I don't love. I can do full coverage. Y'all know I can do that. But if a concealer is full coverage, I feel like it needs to have more of a natural finish to not look so intense. So this concealer was a no for me. Second to last is the NYX Brow Glue, which is a product I've seen so many people recommend for the look of really feathery, pushed up brows. I was very excited to try it out based on those recommendations because... I need all the help I can get in the eyebrow department. I don't have a lot to work with. These babies are sparse. So I'm not sure if that's why this product didn't work for me, but I just felt like this was heavy and goopy and weighed down my brows and did not do anything that I wanted it to do. Like I was hoping it would maybe be an affordable alternative for the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Freeze, but it was not. I think that that product is so much better. And last is the Olaplex Number no. 4C Clarifying Shampoo. I feel like I rag on Olaplex shampoos a lot and I definitely don't mean to. They just are not my favorite of all time. I've tried so many shampoos shampoos at this point that there are others I like better than Olaplex. This shampoo claims to contain a broad spectrum clarifying system that removes a wide range of impurities from the hair. And there are so many positive reviews for the shampoo on Sephora's website. So that's why I felt confused about this not working for me. It definitely did do a great job at removing the buildup that I had on my lengths and ends, but I feel like it just wasn't strong enough for me as someone who only washes once a week. My scalp already looked a little bit oily the day after I used it, and that never happens to me unless I'm using a shampoo that has super, super gentle cleansing agents, which is what this has. I did do a deep dive review on this product where I talk about ingredients, I show the formula, I show me using it, I show my hair before and after and a few days later. So if you would like to see that full review, that will be listed below. But for me personally, I found the new K18 shampoos to work so much better. Even their pH maintenance shampoo that is not technically a clarifying shampoo, I think that did a way better job at removing oils for me on my scalp than this Olaplex clarifying shampoo. All right, those are all 10 of the products that I wanted to talk through today. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Did you have a similar experience to me and not love these products or do you love them like everyone else? Are there any other products out there that you feel like everybody else loves that just don't agree with you, that you're not super into? Let me know in the comments below. And if you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much 
much for your support in doing those things. If you need anything from me, check out my description box below. I'll list and link some of the products that I talked about that I do really love. I have links to my favorite beauty products, discount codes, merch, everything is there for you. So that is everything. Thank you guys for watching. I love you so freaking much and make sure to stay tuned for my next video because that will be up in a few days. But until then, I hope you have a great few days.